Volition's The Punisher is one of the most sadistic, brutal, and absolutely ballsy video games I've ever played. Released in January of 2005 to Xbox, PlayStation 2, and PC, the game stars the anti-hero The Punisher or Frank Castle as he tracks down various mob bosses and criminals. The game was a loose follow-up to the movie of the same name that was released the year prior, both of which star Thomas Jane in the lead role. The Punisher was developed by Volition Studios and published by THQ. Volition is probably best known for their work in the over-the-top series Saints Row. However, as of early February 2020, Volition exchanged their IP rights, including the other well-known series they worked on, Red Faction, to Deep Silver. The Punisher is an action-adventure third-person shooter, with each mission starting from Frank's apartment as he tracks down various mobsters, in particular the Ganucci crime family. The game borrowed heavily from Welcome Back Frank, a 12-issue arc written by Gareth Ennis that really solidified how absolutely damaged and out of control Frank Castle really was. Volition went headfirst into making the game just that, an embodiment of the Punisher. What you get is a hyper-violent, gun-toting anti-hero that absorbs bullets like the leather trench coat he's wrapped in is made of the world's sturdiest Kevlar. The violent is spectacular. So spectacular that it was met with red flags that haven't really ever been seen before. The game's graphic violence is truly a novelty with the Punisher having the ability to do interrogations and executions in creative ways like liquid hot metal or shoving a goon's head into piranhas. The attention to detail when it came to the ways of killing people was saw levels of sadistic. What was featured in the final version of the game ended up being heavily censored from what was originally done, with the ESRB putting their foot down. So what we see, which ends up being entirely graphic beyond the wildest of imaginations, was actually censored. Good lord, and it doesn't stop there. As the game went full Monty on killings that featured limbs being blown off, and quick time event killings that often were as graphic and creative as any sort of torture sequence. Garth Ennis had a cement stance on Frank, and that was his killing and aggression wasn't just a factor or variable from losing his family, but one that was always there. Frank just liked murdering people, and that fact comes across quite clear from the get-go. Missions are designed with a linear path, A to B, with interrogations opening up lines of dialogue that may help you get to certain areas easier. Majority of the game is seen through flashbacks as what you experience is a retelling from Frank's position at Rikers Island. While I'm often not a fan of this storytelling approach, so much is going on with the game that it never bothered me that it was all just a flashback. Each mission is pretty simple. Eliminating big name targets like the Bushwhacker, the Yakuza, and even fighting against surprise names like Bullseye. Yep, the Punisher never forgets that it is in the Marvel Universe, including cameos from the Kingpin, the Internal Sun, Nick Fury, and even Stark Towers. This was all pretty darn cool, made better by the fact that this was a whole three years before the first Iron Man even came out. Gunplay felt okay most of the time. It goes without saying that the game heavily borrowed from Max Payne, with intense gun battles, leaping physics, and a character that played like an absolute tank. Except Max Payne had a much better story, and its actual combat played much better into the character. The Punisher feels like a war machine, and while he is, the actual basis of the story doesn't really give him a reason to feel like such. Max was hyped up on vengeance, and enough painkillers to make Gary Busey feel normal. Enemies rush at you as boneheaded as the next, leaving little to tactics besides you just blazing them down. At least you get a ridiculous amount of gun types and the ability to upgrade your health, armor, weapons, and accuracy. I oftentimes find myself caught in this web of, hey, this is 2005, gameplay is much different now. But also remembering this is the same year that God of War, GTA San Andreas, and Splinter Cell Chaos Theory all came out. The combat just felt loose, with the bullets and weapons never really feeling as solid as they should. Oftentimes I try to aim down sight just to hit something. Listen, Volition, I have Parkinson's, can you stop being crass on me missing shots and help me out with some sort of semi-auto lock or something? The gameplay always felt like there was a part missing even with the addition of upgrades, various weapon types, and the apartment base. It all just felt tacked on. 
Thankfully, Thomas Jane reappears to give the role some credibility. For the most part, he sounds like the only actor trying here, with most of the voice acting being so damn over the top. New York City. Forget the things you've heard about the place. About the new New York. Voice acting for the longest time has just been an afterthought, with video games carrying majority of that thought. Here, it clearly is with just a lot of silly lines of dialogue delivered as if someone just inhaled the Batman 89 clown balloon and helium. Thomas Jane gives it some sort of oomph, even if his taunting can come off a bit, uh, creepy? On a scale of find it or lose it, I'd give 2005's The Punisher a find it. Listen, 2005's The Punisher isn't a good game. The graphics were dated even then. A lot of the level design is forgotten about, with rooms that feature little to nothing in terms of creativity. The gunplay is just okay, and the story isn't much to write home about. What the Punisher brings is levels and levels of dated novelty. A game like this would never be made today. Each level had me feel like I was the most sadistic son of a bitch to ever play a video game. Deaths were plenty, often gruesome and violent in ways that made me scream, Whoa, this is 2005? I just can't fathom a game coming out today with ray tracing graphics on a television the size of the refrigerator box I live in playing like this. The game was surrounded with levels of controversy, and while it made money with 1 million copies sold, it wasn't enough to really dignify moving forward. The interrogations and deaths were really the most inspired part of the game. Regardless, it's a game that creates questions, answers little, gives plenty of entertainment, and sometimes a solid reminder that it's okay to gag at the thought of a guy running around with a grenade in his mouth. If you enjoyed this review, smash the like button, leave me a comment on your thoughts on The Punisher, and click this video for more reviews. I'll see you on the next one.